me All right, okay. right now. It's running. Now just hold it. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the outfit changes I had had for during the day. Now these are these are different outfits that I had. How long do you think you'll be out here, Andy? Well, I'll be out here for a couple hours. I mean, I came with all these hand warmers and all. You might as so well. Any, no, so I want you to know that I let it all hang out. I have my my sex worker trans militant awesome. feminist shirt. Nice, I love it. And I thought, well, if I want to feel real kind of fun, I could get a little more feminine with my my glamour hat here. See? Doesn't that catch the sun beautifully? But the funniest thing I found looking through my hats, I have all these outfits, you know. I found something which I don't think anybody else in the world has besides this transgender scarf that a friend gave me. I had peace in case Donald Trump declares war while we're here. I had this to put the, the, use, the use wrappers in. Let me see the big one. The big one is the funniest one. That's the most fun. It's the only one I could have. Oh, here it is. Unbelievable. This is unbelievable. Now, I really must say this was accidental. I had this before the famous Women's March where they popped out the pussy hats. I went through my things and what did I find? I found, I found the rarest hat in the world. This is a boy. This is a boy pussy hat. Yes, sir. I love boy pussy. Can you say that now legally on the airways? <laughs> I know. One of, the, one of the people at the Women's March said, pussies grab back. And I thought, that isn't a good idea because pussies shouldn't grab back. If pussies grab back, they're in trouble. <laughs> pussies should slap back <laughs> instead of grab back. So here I am all ready for the, for the rally. All those, all those hand warmers. Oh dear. Don't you, you like this pussy rally. hat? I think it's the way pussy hat is a top. Uh, I even had a bag to put my, uh, I had a Willy Ninja hat I considered. So I don't know, this, this is like, this is my, for my all my leftist friends. This is, uh, oh, uh, gosh, it's, look at this. The way pussies don't know how to tie knots. They're dizzy, dizzy. <laughs> Didn't I tell you I actually worked Hollywood Boulevard? I worked Hollywood Boulevard. In 1959, I didn't look anything in 1959 like I look today. If I learn more in six weeks of working on Hollywood or eight weeks of working on Hollywood Boulevard, I was going back to school in the fall than I learned at the University of Texas the next year. And I must admit, there were times that I was a boy pussy on Hollywood Boulevard because when the men are paying, they get to do what they want to do. I used to tell somebody, I was, actually, it was at, at Target. This guy was helping me out with that. I just got my cell free $10,000 on my upper teeth. I said, I know something you don't know. And I, I said, I said, it's kind of wild. You want to know what it is? And this poor innocent child said, Eric was his name. He's about 22, a little bit taller than me. He said, yes. I said, it's worse to have a tongue stick, stick his tongue down your throat than his penis up your ass. And he looked kind of shocked. I said, you didn't know that, did you? And he said, no, I didn't. So then I just, I was just in this weird meditative state because they were telling me it was going to be $10,000 for my upper teeth and now it's $17,000 for my lower. And I was thinking, I worked all my life, you know, and I just was just, I was just in this, in this crazed state. And I finally said, you know, I've, I've been taking too much of your time. I, you know, I, I started walking away and he said, oh no, sir. Oh no, sir. He was following me around like a puppy dog. Oh no, sir. You're the most interesting customer I ever had. <laughs> I thought that was so great. I mean, you know, and he won. I got, I, I went on a shopping spree. I'm a compulsive shopper. I think this is, what do you, would you like this hat? You think because of peace? I think most of the people, you know, let's face it, we're about to go to war with somebody, you know. Oh, do you think I'd get a bad reputation being a feminist? I mean, let's face it, so many trans people are are forced into prostitution. That's horrible. I mean, I did it as an experiment. I mean, I had two choices. Go get a job, nine to five, or I could go out and try. So, oh, I could hang out all night at the all night coffee shop with all the pretty little queens and screw my brains out. Or I could, uh, you know, or I could get some stupid job nine to five where I wouldn't be up to hanging out all night. 
So I made the choice it'd be more fun to work as a, as a male hooker. And once a cop stopped me, and cop was sitting in his car with this older man, he said, kid, he said, that guy is a sex offender. And he said something about communists and, and Negroes. And I said, I know they're nice Negroes, and I suspect they're nice communists too. And the cop says to me, oh, a wise guy, huh? So he made me wait. 45 minutes while he ran a police check on me at the FBI headquarters. Can you believe that? That was the closest I came to having any trouble. I had some incredible stories, really, really amazing. I went with this banker. He invited me out at four in the afternoon and said, what are you going with me for, money? I said, yeah. And I found out that he had come out at 40 and we, he took me out to dinner, and we'd always carry on. He'd put a love gift in my pocket. That was very nice to put the love gift in the pocket so you don't pay the cash in the hand. And I found out he had never danced with another man. So we put on some, uh, oh, what was the name? The guy that was so popular then. Real smooth. Some people mistook me. This took him for me for him when I was younger. Uh, very soft. I think he might have been, anyway. Uh, we put on the thing and we danced. I danced with him. Like, you know, I was going out to the, to the all night coffee house. It was probably eight or nine o'clock at night. So I danced with this man. It was his first dance. That was incredible to have a man that had just come out at 40. I mean, there was a guy who came to our over 40 group who came out at 65. Can you imagine coming out at 65? I don't want to sound cynical, but it felt like saying, I bother. I mean, but there was interesting about it is he was so thrilled. He was excited. You know, so really becoming yourself and being yourself. A lot of trans people. I mean, I'm amazed how many, like uh, Rusty, who ran Transy House in Brooklyn. She was a married male with two kids when she transitioned. And Chelsea also was had a couple kids, and they both. Well, Rusty was older in 1992, so I guess Rusty was in her 50s. She was a professor of economics at Cooney. And uh, I thought that was incredible too, you know, the... I mean, when I went out, I met my first Susanna, the first transsexual. She invited us to dinner, and these people walked in and looked like my mother's uh, bridge sisters. And it was a psychiatrist, and he was sitting there and he was saying, would they arrest me if I went out? He looked just like my mother's, not one head turned. No one would ever thought he was, because, you know, transsexuals just want to pass as regular women. Mm. But I remember him sitting there and pondering, would they arrest me if I went out topless on the beach? Because I'm, you know, between, I'm still male technically, but I've grown these breasts with hormones. And all those kind of things, you know, you, I was stupid. I thought that people that were transsexual were guilt ridden homosexuals who castrated themselves to belong. That was because Christine Jorgensen said she wouldn't have sex with a man. It was against her religion. Well, anyway, I've run on too much. It looks like this man over here, so maybe he's already filming me. I don't know. I realized something really bad. What? <laughs> this is behind me? No, no, no. Um, this is just Dead. my fault. I forgot to bring an SD card, so I might have to... What do you mean SD card? It's the... It's the card that stores memory in a camera, so I can't shoot anything right now. Randy, why do you have that? I have two. I have two cameras and two extra chips. Is this an SD card extreme? That's exactly what. That's exactly what you need. You owe me about sixteen dollars and twenty cents, plus carrying charges. Absolutely. Thank you, Randy. I thought I was so, oh well, my God! I thought here I'm talking away, and I have the so you can stop this interview. I'll start going.